This is thermite. It's a powdered mixture of iron oxide and aluminium, which when ignited burns at two and a half thousand degrees Celsius, which is very, very hot. Packed into the slow release mechanism of a garden flower pot, the thermite is ready for action. Just like the touch paper, it's done well back. The fuse triggers the irreversible thermite reaction. As scorching hot meets freezing cold, a fierce battle rages. The smoke clears, and incredibly, nothing remains. As the thermite burns at two and a half thousand degrees, it releases a raging torrent of molten iron, which rains down upon the liquid nitrogen, boiling the glacial mixture away in a plume of vapor and melting the cylinder, leaving just a puddle of white hot iron. A clear victory for thermite. The engine block is the densest part of a car. It's basically a huge lump of metal, and, well, it's very hard to melt. Lucky then, the Brainiacs have plenty of thermite specially packed into the slow release mechanism of a garden flower pot. A big pile on the bonnet directly over the engine block should do the trick. The irreversible thermite reaction begins. Within seconds, the fiery concoction eats through the bonnet, spraying molten thermite into the engine beneath. The devastation continues inside until finally a torrent of white-hot liquid metal pours out of the bottom, signaling the inevitable victory for thermite. A quick check confirms a clear path of destruction.
is uh, Stephen Jones. I'm a professor of physics at Brigham Young University in Provo, Utah. I've written oh, over 40 peer-reviewed uh, journals, uh, articles in scientific journals. I've published in Scientific American, Nature, uh, Physical Review Letters, and, and so on. So uh, I've done a lot of stuff. I was principal investigator for a number of years for the Department of Energy in the area of what's called muon catalyzed fusion. And uh, sometimes that, by the way, is called cold fusion. And I studied that for a number of years as the principal investigator. So, you know, I've been around. I've, uh, I'm aware of the scientific method. In this case, I feel that the results are so important that the, the evidence that points directly to a controlled demolition, which means an inside job, brought these World Trade Center buildings down. I feel that those data are so important that it just needs to get out uh, to the world, and I'm willing to speak out and, uh, and and do my best to bring these data out. In this case, I saw the molten yellow hot metal flowing out of the South Tower just before its collapse, and the white ash drifting away associated with that um, metal. And those are characteristics of the thermite reaction. But to verify this, so, so now we have a, a strong hypothesis. This looks like thermite was used on the South Tower. Then we, we obtained, and the other buildings, because there's molten metal under all three towers after their collapses. But then we, we went to work and we obtained uh, samples of the molten metal that is, is now solidified. We analyzed the molten metal to see if it has the characteristics, the ingredients, and the end products now that we would expect from this uh, thermite compound. And, and it did. I mean, iron in abundance, uh, manganese, potassium, sulfur. These are the ingredients for what a variation of thermite known as thermate, and it's used for cutting through steel rapidly. It, it was not just thermite uh, the products, but thermate, which is a particular type of thermite which is used to cut rapidly through steel. It's like, um, sure, you can take a knife, you take the butter out of the fridge, and you cut through that butter. Now, adding sulfur to the therm thermite and also potassium permanganate, these chemicals, it's like heating up your knife to a very high temperature. Now, it slices right through the butter. Even if the butter's cold, it slices right through. Same way here, by adding sulfur and potassium permanganate to thermite, it'll now slice through structural steel very rapidly. And, but the end products then, you'll have sulfur, and potassium, manganese, and iron. And that's what we see.